The podcast you're about to hear is part of the Polish Scottish Heritage Project as one of its many productions which aim to promote a greater awareness of Poland and Scotland's shared heritage. We hope that it encourages you personally to look into the stories of the places, events and people that shape the history we are privileged to share. My father was born on the 1st of May 1923 in Warsaw near the Stary Miasto and he was named Lubomir Wojciech which I understand is a very old-fashioned Polish name. He had an older brother, Swavik, and a younger sister, Hanka. Father was called Marian Vitalis and his mother, Paulina. His father had fought in the First World War with Marshal Pilsudski and later in the 1920-21 war against the Bolsheviks. I think that company later became the Piersza Brigada. I believe he was given a farm in, in the east um, because he fought in that war. My dad went to school in Marshalkowska Street in Warsaw. And when he died in 2012, I took some of his ashes back to Warsaw and I walked along Marshalkowska Street and that, that was quite moving. And I, I saw where he was born in the old town. The happiest times of my father's life as a boy, he said, were in Ravaruska at the army barracks because my grandfather was the chief of police or the border police at Ravaruska and my father loved the military life because they stayed in barracks in Ravaruska and my father loved that life. He was telling, he told us a story about when he was living in southern Poland on the borders with Czechoslovakia. His father took him to the site of an air crash some years before where two Polish airmen had died and it was the 29th of April 1933 which was the day that my mother was born and my father always remembered that day because he was very interested in in anything to do with the military and he wanted to be a pilot and he always remembered that that day and that was the day that my mother was born. When they were in Ravaruska when the war broke out they were caught between the Germans and the Russians. The Germans invaded from one side and the Russians invaded from the other side. And on the 13th of April 1940, there was a knock on the door and they kind of expected that it was going to be the NKVD and it was the NKVD. And they were given an hour to pack all their belongings and sent um, east. And they were put into the cattle trucks. And I think there were about 70 odd people in the in the wagon with them and they were they were sent east i know that once every 24 hours they got a bucket of hot soup and some hot water and some bread and after about i think it was a 13 day journey and they arrived in kazakhstan in a place called alga my, my grandmother was told by the NKVD officer when she started to cry. He said, why are you crying? You're going to the, the glorious Soviet Union and your husband will be waiting for you. But of course, the um, he had been killed at Katyn Forest and he wasn't waiting for them when they got to their destination. He ended up in Scotland in June 1941. Germany attacked the Soviet Union. There was a Soviet-Polish agreement and Stalin proclaimed a general amnesty and freed thousands of Poles who'd been in exile in the East. And my father and his brother joined the Polish forces. And I think they must have been with General Anders and made their way to the Middle East. And at some stage, he arrived by ship in the UK. Well, he joined the RAF, the Polish forces. With the Polish forces, he, he was, well, I know he, he was with a Polish squadron based in Hensford in England. And that's all I know. I don't know any more details about that, but that's where he was based. He was enlisted into the Polish Resettlement Corps in 1946 and was released for employment to work as a clerk in the Polish Vocational College Association, Five Park Grove Terrace, Glasgow. It's now known as the Sikorsky Club. That's how he came to Glasgow. He wasn't released from the RAF officially until 1949 and he must have decided to stay in the UK and not to go back to a communist Poland. I've got one 
letter from Poland, in one very early letter from 1946. My grandmother is advising my father not to return because she didn't think it would be safe for him to return to Poland. So he chose to stay in the UK. He met my mum, Sheila Fraser, in 1948 at a nice rink in the Kelvin Hall in Glasgow. And they married in 1950 at St George's Road Church, Glasgow. And they later moved to West Graham Street in Glasgow. And that's where I was born. And there are four children, Stefan, Corinne, Janina and Mark. And in the early years, I think there was quite a strong Polish connection. There were quite a few Polish families living in West Graham Street. And my brother, Stefan and Corinne were sent to Polish classes and they had to learn Polish and go and watch Polish films and didn't like it. Or my brother hated it. My sister didn't mind, but I can't recall being sent. I do remember we had a Polish doctor and a Polish dentist. My mum and dad often went to the Polish club and socialised there a lot. My grandmother, Scottish grandmother, used to give my parents money so they could go off to the club so she could babysit us. <laughs> um, my father used to bring home Polish food from a shop in Charing Cross Road. He brought back Bieszka, herrings, krówka. Now krówka was a real treat. There was a lot of he used to bring back Krufka from that shop, so we always enjoyed that. Now I, they're too sickly, but as a child I loved them. Um, New Year parties? Any kind of parties, my father had to show people how to drink vodka properly. And from a tiny little glass and down in a winner, we had Vishnufka, things like that at New Year. Well, children wouldn't have it but um, my father had these things for anyone coming to visit us. He used to sing folk songs. Pia Kuba Doya Kuba comes to mind. And we used to laugh at him. We thought it was hilarious. He loved trams. He, anything to do with driving, whether it be tram, bus, car, he loved. He absolutely adored driving, but his favorite job was driving trams around Glasgow. When the tram stopped, he then drove buses because he never completed his education, um, which was broken in the war. My uncle did, but my father, my father didn't. But his first job was as a clean easy salesman. But I don't think he did very well at that because I don't think he had that much English at that time. <laughs> but um, the job he loved most was driving tram. He could drive for hours and hours. He just loved driving. And I don't know if that's a Polish trait or not. <laughs> <laughs> he, he loved his car and he loved driving. I remember he used to send parcels back to Poland and the letters I've had translated, they're saying thank you for the parcels. And I think he sent coffee and cigarettes and possibly some clothes back to Poland because I think conditions were still, were very hard in Poland in the fifties. As a child, I was very embarrassed by my name because at school there was no one else in my class with, with a name like mine, Janina Ozhohovska. And the teacher never, no teacher ever attempted to pronounce my surname. When they were reading the register in the mornings, it was always Nina and everyone else's surname and never mine. I cannot recall one teacher ever attempting to pronounce it. But as a child, I just wanted to be like others. And I was very embarrassed by it. Well, I've changed my name of now, of course, but, but now I love it. Yes, yes. I think it's a beautiful name. And the older I get, the more interested I'm becoming in my Polish, about my Polish background. Well, I feel more Scottish than Polish, obviously, but um, having been to Poland now, I'm becoming very interested in, in my Polish background. I've been to Warsaw. There, and I've also been to Krakow and I felt a great sense of belonging to Krakow for some reason. <laughs> I just loved Krakow. I'm quite proud of my Polish background and the more I learn about the Poles and their history, I feel quite proud of that. I was very proud of my dad always. 
he never ever was bitter about what happened to him and to his family or about Katyn. I remember as a child, my dad told us about Wojtek the bear and we thought it was hilarious. We, we couldn't stop laughing and we teased him simply because the, the, the bear was Wojtek, which is the same name as my dad, because everyone called my dad Wojtek, not Wojtek, Wojtek. His family meant everything to him and he was a very good father. Whether it's because of what happened to him in the war, I don't know, but he was, would never go out drinking or, I mean, he stayed with his family. His family was most important to him. I remember when we were children, if we were ever naughty or anything, we would be told the Russians would get you. And the Russians were the bogeymen, not the monsters. It was the Russian. oh, the Russians will get you was the warning that we had. Yes, my father got his certificate of naturalization in 1960. And I think he was very happy about that. He never wanted to go back to Poland. And my late husband and I, we wanted to take him to Poland, but he wouldn't go. And I, I don't know why, maybe because it would have been to a very different place. And he had very happy childhood memories. I don't know, but he wouldn't go back. So he's not been to Poland since no. the war? My uncle went back. But my father never went back. I'm the only one in my family who's been to Poland and I want to see more of Poland. I'm going back to Krakow very shortly and I, I do intend going to Gdansk and a few other places because I've become very interested. And I want to go back to Warsaw because from having had some letters translated, I now know where the family plot is. I know where members of my family are buried in Warsaw and I want to go there to lay some flowers or just to see where the family are buried. This project would not have been possible without the support of our sponsors, including the Consulate General of the Republic of Poland in Edinburgh and the enthusiasm and hard work of our project volunteers, for which we are extremely grateful.